Chevy Trucks, Shooting Sports America. It's a place where the targets fly faster, the bullseyes get smaller, and the pressure to put your shot smack in the middle of the tin ring goes right through the roof. Olympic-style shooting. From the very best shooters in the United States to the top guns from around the world, it is the ultimate test of boxing ship skill. So stay tuned as we join more than 900 athletes from the U.S. and around the world as they compete in the 1996 UIT Shooting World Cup. Hi, I'm Gritz Gresham, shooting editor for Sports of Field magazine. And on behalf of the National Shooting Sports Foundation, it's my pleasure to welcome you to this edition of Chevy Trucks Shooting Sports America. We're here at the Wolf Creek Shooting Complex in Atlanta, site for all of the shooting events of the 1996 Olympic Games. Olympic team members from 85 different countries are gathered here to compete in 15 World Cup shooting events in precision rifle, pistol, and shotgun competition. And joining me to cover all the action is fellow sports field editor Tom Gresham. Gritz, great to be here with you. You know, the U.S. team enters this Olympic year with high hopes, but they'll face stiff competition from all fronts at this World Cup. Unlike in many Olympic events, where competitors from only a handful of countries are likely contenders, in shooting, athletes from several dozen countries can be in the medal hunt. And in a sport where a drop target or two, or a tenth of a point out of 500, can make all the difference, the U.S. shooters really have their work cut out for them. Targets flying up to 65 miles an hour, and shooters often having no more than half a second to pick up, swing through, and fire at a clay bird. Olympic-style trap and speed events require lightning-fast reflexes and split-second time. The clay target range here at the Wolf Creek Complex is designed for international-style trap, double trap, and skeet events, and includes stands for 5,000 spectators. Special flash targets, which contain a pouch of orange powder, are used in all the final rounds, helping referees determine hits, while also adding spectator appeal to these fast action events. In the women's double trap event, 16-year-old U.S. shooting sensation Kim Rohde tied finish shooter Rita Mertonini for the lead after the preliminary round, both with scores of 107 out of 120. In third place, with a score of 104, was Teresa DeWitt, also on the U.S. team. Svetlana Dominia of Russia was in fourth place with a 103. And Chang Zhu of China and Yoshiko Kira, both with scores of 101, rounded off the six finalists going into the medal round. As they entered the final round, 16-year-old Kim Rohde was tied to the lead with Rita Mertenyemi of Finland. Only three shots back, Teresa DeWitt of the USA was in a great position also. The wind was blowing and the targets were bouncing, and Rita's experience seemed to be showing as she centered each target of every pair. Kim looked a little bit nervous as she started dropping some targets, but that left the door open for U.S. shooter Teresa DeWitt. In the end, it was Rita Mertenielli of Finland who won the gold with a 147. Teresa DeWitt took silver with a 143, and Kim Rohde's 142 took the bronze. A fine start for these American shooters. We'll be right back with more World Cup action from the Wolf Creek Olympic Shooting Complex. Chevy Trucks Shooting Sports America is brought to you by Winchester, Ruger, and Chevy Trucks. With stadium seating for 2,500 spectators and an all-new electronic target and scoring system, this range here at Wolf Creek is truly a world-class facility. Oh, no doubt about it. You know, back in the old days when we used paper targets, the spectators really couldn't tell what was going on, and it often took several minutes to get the target score. But with this new electronic state-of-the-art system, the shooters get instantaneous feedback. It's accurate to within a tenth of a millimeter, and it's really changed shooting into an exciting spectator sport. Combining both rapid fire and precision stages, the women's sport pistol event puts a premium on both speed and accuracy. Going into the finals, Agathy Kasaumi's preliminary score of 589 out of 600 gave her a four-point lead over Nino Solovatsi of Georgia. In this medal round, competitors fire 10 shots at a two-inch bullseye 25 meters downrange. Shots are electronically scored to a tenth of a point, and the final round score is added to the preliminary score to determine the medal winners. Agathy got off to a poor start, and after just two shots, her four-point lead was down to just three-tenths of a point. Through the fifth and sixth shots, 
The lead changed several times. But Agathy went down in the last three shots, scoring two almost perfect 10 sixes to take the goal by just one point. Maria goes diva is Nino Salabatsi for the silver. Whether it's shotgun shooting or precision rifle, international competition involves not only great shooting skill, but also state-of-the-art equipment. I had the chance to talk to Federal Ammunition's President, Ron Mason. Federal Cartridge has been strongly involved in the Olympics for a long time. We have. We've been involved with the shooting team since 1990. Uh, we started development of the Ultramatch cartridge then. Uh, we later followed that up with the development of the gold medal international shot shell load. And, and we found them to be just world-class people as well as world-class athletes. While near perfection is the norm in Olympic-style shooting, in no event is the standard for winning higher than in the 50-meter free rifle prone event. Here, the combination of extraordinarily accurate target rifles and ammunition and the added steadiness of the prone position mean that competitors typically fire bullseyes with practically every shot in their 60-round preliminary match. Earlier, I had the chance to talk to legendary U.S. rifle shooter, three-time Olympian and two-time Olympic gold medalist, Lonus Wigger, about what it takes to win in this truly high-precision event. Lonus, this whole uh, Wolf Creek shooting complex is a maze. It gets acoustical targets and the screens and all that. That's high-tech stuff. This is even a little bit nicer, a little bit better, and a little more state-of-the-art than Barcelona. Mm -hmm. Well, tell me about the electronic target. Well, electronic targets uh, were devised for spectators and for TV. The shooter shoots into a black hole, I guess you might say. It's a black rubber band. It still looks like the round black target of old. And with the uh, microphones on each corner, it measures the shot from center. So it gives you the exact value, although you can't see the shot. But the shot is depicted on a monitor that each shooter has in front of him. And it shows the bullet hole on the target on the monitor. So that's all the shooter has to go by. You know, we're looking at shooting a 10 ring that's less than the size of a dime at 50 meters, and then you divide that dime uh, into 10 more parts, and that's how you break the ties. This should be a great competition. I'm looking forward to it. Yes, I am too. It, uh, it certainly could be very exciting because the top shooters will uh, only be separated by one or two points, and uh, every shot's going to count in this final, and uh, it could go right down to the wire. Indeed, going into the final 10-shot round, only two points separated the five finals. U.S. shooter William Meek was in first place, but with only a one-point lead. Our leader, uh, Bill Meek, uh, had a 10.7 on that first shot. As long as he can keep him in the 10 ring or close to the center, he'll walk away with it. But unfortunately, sometimes you have these nine sneak in the middle there. Eric uh, Updegraff, the other U.S. shooter, uh, started in uh, third place, but he had a bad shot on the first shot, a 9.6. Looks like the wind has shifted a little bit. Okay, now now Bill had a bad shot, so that's going to reduce his lead. But the uh, shooter from Switzerland also had a 9.5. Eric has a fine 10.6 there. Uh, up the graph to moved into third place. He's now seven tenths of a point out of the silver. Kierinski, the uh, Polish shooter, is uh, shooting extremely good. Up the graph had a had a 10.8 that time. That's moved him up a, a little bit closer now. Take him into the second slot, isn't it? Looks like he's tied for second place now. And Meek still has a nine-tenths of a point lead. Just as we expected, it's very tight at this point. The top eight shooters went in, uh, only two points separating him, and this is a, an extremely tight final. Well, Eric just uh, had a tough shot there. 9.8. Uh, yeah, that uh, hurts him a little, but it's not that bad. Bill shot a 10.4, and the, the Polish shooter shot a 10.6. Here's a 10.9 from Coke from Switzerland. That's as good as you can get at a 10.9. Even with the 9.8, Eric is still in third place by half a point, and Bill's lead dropped a little bit to seven-tenths of a point. Eric's battling it out with Coke right now for that uh, bronze medal. Uh, the Polish shooter doesn't look like he's going to let up. He's only nine-tenths of a point out of the gold. I would think, unless Meeks has a bad shot, he should be in. He's got a, a whole point lead, and all he needs is a 9.9 .9 or a 10.0, and he'll win the gold. All right, here we go. We'll go to the last shot, and we're going to see if Eric Updegraff can get himself into a medal position. Updegraff at a 10.6. That's great. That'll move him up. 10.4. Uh, Bill's won a gold medal. That's great. The Polish shooter shot a 9.8. He dropped off. The Finnish shooter 
Came in third with a bronze. He beat out the upper draft by two tenths of a point. So with continuing great performances by the U.S. shooters in this World Cup, Bill Meeks takes the gold, with Eric Updegraff missing the bronze by less than one point. Stay tuned for more competition from the Wolf Creek Shooting Complex. The men's 10-meter running target event, considered by most competitors to be the most challenging of all the air gun events, shooters have only a few seconds to fire at a moving target with a bullseye about the size of a pencil eraser. In this medal round, competitors fire 10 shots, each score to a tenth of a point, with a 10.9, the best possible score on each shot. Russian shooter Dmitry Lykin equaled the world record score of 585 in his preliminary round and went into the final round with a three-point edge over Czechoslovakian Lubis Rinkowski. Fellow Czech shooter and world record holder Janis Miroslav was in third place with a score of 580. This running target event, the U.S. hasn't done very well traditionally, but we've got a one man in the finals this time. Yeah, Adam Satov finished the finals six points out of the medal level. Yeah, it's very difficult to uh, to make up six points, but he can still have a good performance. Oh, he's working a very good final score. He ended up with exactly 98.0. Some of the others are going to have a little bit more, and uh, you don't make up and win with that kind of score, but you certainly can hold your own. We got the last two shooters coming up. The shooter from Czechoslovakia, Rakonski, has been around a long time, so he's been in a lot of World Cups, World Championships, European Championships. And uh, he's used to this kind of pressure. Lycan from Russia shot so well that he has a uh, three-point lead going into this. If Lycan can get him a string of mid-tens here, he's going to set a world record. Certainly doesn't look like the lack of experience for the young Russian. He doesn't seem flustered a bit. He's definitely on track to take the gold here. Attention. Five, four, three, two. One, start. 10.9, you can't make him any prettier than that. Dimitri Lykin, his great 10-shot score of 98.4 gave him the gold. Lubis Rinkowski's medal round score of 96.6 gave him the silver, and Janis Miroslav took the bronze. U.S. shooter Adam Satov came in fifth with a final total score of 672. In the men's 25-meter rapid-fire pistol event, one U.S. shooter, John McNally, made it into the final round. Six points off the lead, however, he faced an uphill battle to move into medal contention. Tell us what's the size of the tin ring in this event. It's 100 millimeters, or 10 centimeters, right at four inches. The shooting is at 25 meters, so that's a tough target. And it's it's four seconds, but it's not four seconds to get off the shot. You actually have to get that gun up. That's right. You start in the ready position. That's pointing the pistol toward the ground at a 45-degree angle. And when the green light comes on, uh, they have to raise the pistol and shoot the five shots within that four seconds. Only one point separates McNally from third place. And actually, it's a possibility of actually moving up into the silver. Right, he's only six points out of the uh, gold medal at this point, but it's going to be awful tough to beat Ralph Schumann. He's uh, such a good shooter, and he's, he's won so many times. Well, he has the background. Didn't his dad shoot in the Olympics? Right, his dad, Jim, uh, was a fine rapid-fire shooter, shot in a couple Olympic teams. And, of course, John's been on three, so he has that experience. He needs about a 103 or a 104, and that'll move him up and put him in good shape for a bronze medal. All going to have it in four seconds here for John McNally. One point two. That's a good score. Looking at the screen, he had an excellent group. Look at that group. That was wonderful. That's excellent shooting by John McNally. And the toughest thing about this is this entire match now for John McNally comes down to this next four seconds. One start. Well, here we have McNally's in first place by one-tenth of a point with two shooters to go. And, of course, they have uh, an awfully big lead coming into this. Ralph Schumann, he is really tough to beat. He has dominated rapid-fire pistols 
for about uh, the last six years. Attention. Right, here's their five, first two high shot four, strikes. Three, two, one, start. Fifty point six for Schumann and a forty eight point nine for Kutarchik. Kutarchik would have to shoot a ninety-eight point four to let McNally in the door for the silver. He's pretty well conceded the gold to Schumann, unless Schumann has a bad shot, which I doubt very seriously this will happen. With a near-perfect last series, it was Germany's Rath Schumann taking the gold medal. And while Kucharczyk edged McNally out for the silver, John was thrilled to have made his way up from back of the pack to take the bronze. It feels very good coming from 16th to 3rd, you know. Next, next time I'll start out a little bit higher and I'll, I'll take it. In an event typically dominated by European shooters, it was another great showing by the U.S. team. We'll be right back with more of the 1996 World Cup at Atlanta's Wolf Creek Olympic venue. Chevy Trucks, Shooting Sports America. In the hotly contested final round of the Men's International Skeet Competition, five shooters were bunched at the top, including U.S. Air Force Major Bill Roy. Yeah, we have four shooters within one target of the leader here. So uh, this is going to be very tightly contested. All right, German shooter Heinrich is up. They're shooting a Go. pair of singles, and then they will shoot a simultaneous pair. And here goes Bill Roy. I tell you, at this level, what it's going to take, you just about feel like you have to go straight on all 25 targets oh. to have a chance. And just as I said that, Bill Roy dropped that target out of that pair. Bill Roy has dropped three targets, so that doesn't put him in a very good position with about 10 birds to go. Now we've got uh, five shooters all tied at 133 total. So it's an extremely tight race here. We're going to see what's going to happen. American Bill Roy is three shots back from the pack with a 134. Oh. Good rhythm, but I tell you what, it's just not going to be enough today for Bill Roy. Ah. I would say there's no doubt but we're going to have a shoot-off of some sort here. Could be a five-way shoot-off. Just a matter right now of deciding how many are going to get into the shoot-off. That's quite a good round. That's a perfect round of 25 for, for Capellus from Cyprus. Great round. And this is Heinrich from Germany. All he needs is one more, and he has his 25. And he goes straight for 25. Here's your shooter, Major Bill Roy, finishing up his round. And his last target from Station 8, he'll be taking the low house, low gun, fast target. Pull! And Bill Roy ends up with a 21 for the final round. A good score, but not good enough at this level. You know, Bill Roy dropped only four targets in the 125 bird preliminary race, and he had dropped four in this 25 bird shoot-off. I think really I needed to get on top of it after that first miss though, and uh, since I didn't, uh, I was able to watch the shoot off after that. Oh, and quite a shoot off it was. Veteran German shooter John Heinrich never flinched in this missing out final and took the gold over Japan's Soshiro Ito, who finally dropped a single target on the eighth station. In this hard fought contest, Crystal Cretellis of Cyprus ended up with the bronze medal. Stay tuned for more competition from the Wolf Creek Shooting Complex. Chevy Trucks Shooting Sports America is brought to you by Marlin, Federal, and Chevy Trucks. In the men's double trap event, 66 shooters from 32 countries took to the line. And after the last shot in the 150 bird preliminary round was fired, only 10 targets separated the top 18 competitors. Of course, only the top six shooters advanced to the final round of 50 targets, and among these finalists were all three U.S. team entrants. 
tied for the lead with scores of 142 out of 150 were John Opio and David Alcariza of the U.S. team and Turkish shooter Servet Savikaya. One target back was the third U.S. team member, Lance Bay. Rounding out the top six were Mark Russell of Australia with a 139 and Ray Mokapia of Finland with a 138. Obviously, this is going to be a very tight contest as we shoot the final 50 targets. Absolutely. They've got to watch it in this wind, Tom. This wind is tough. Targets are bouncing and twisting out there. All right, here we go with Lance Bates' first target. And he breaks them both. And here's our situation. We have John Opio in the lead by one point. He's won a couple of bronze medals in the 94 Havana World Cup and in the 94 UIT World Shoot. He's had a lot of experience at double trap, and uh, we're expecting him to do well here. He's uh, hanging in there with the lead. He just needs to keep shooting his game. Nice, nice. Oh, good shooting. Hope he was really got it. He is on a old record pace. If he goes straight through this, he will set a new world record in double trap. He has a two-shot lead over Lance Bade, who is leading David out at least one shot at this point. We still have the U.S. team at one, two, three. I hope he'll drop the target there. He's still maintaining his one-shot lead that takes him out of the run for tying the world record. Oh, look at that. Did you see that bird take off to the right? That wind hit it right out from under John Opio. Just blew it out from under his pattern. All right, what we have now is a tie between John Opio and Lance Bade. And what we're looking at here is a possible U.S. of one, two, and three. All the medals here. David Alcariza dropped another target. Tell you what, he's struggling right now. He's mentally working, trying to hold it off. All right, we're down to the final couple of pairs here. Okay, John Opio breaks both of these birds. He'll be oh. in the lead. And he does. So it's Opio by one over Bay. One pair left to go. Drop that last target. Here we go. John Opio, if he breaks the boat, he takes it. And he does. John Opio wins the goal. Great shooting by that 23 year old from Sparks, Nevada. John Opio. So another great finish for our American shooters. This time a gold and a silver medal in the men's double trap event for USA shooting team members John Opio and Lance Bay. Great World Cup and superb shooting by U.S. team members across the board. That's right, Grits. After six days and 15 different shooting events, the United States came out on top in the medal standings with three gold, two silver, and two bronze medals. The best showing ever for U.S. shooters in international competition. And we wish the best and continued great shooting to all of the hundreds of shooters from around the world who competed here at the Wolf Creek Olympic Shooting Complex. We hope you enjoyed this edition of Chevy Trucks Shooting Sports America and hope you'll join us again next time.